abducted military officer Major Dalong murdered after bandits attacked Nigerian Defense Academy. PDP crisis enters another phase as Uche Secondus hands over to deputy following a court order. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anacombe. The military officer, Major Christopher Datong, abducted at the Nigeria Defense Academy Afaka in Kaduna State, has been murdered. According to reports, his body was found on Tuesday evening, um, hours after he was captured by bandits. The security breach of the Nigerian Defense Academy triggered shock across the nation with everyone um, wondering if anyone is really safe, if bandits could still operate so freely inside an elite military institution. Well, joining us to discuss this is security expert Peter Egbidion and retired Colonel Chinedu Ohonda. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us as well. Good evening. Great. Um, I'm going to start with you, Colonel Honda, because you obviously, this is your constituency. I, I mean, everyone who is in the armed forces, like I said yesterday, trained um, in, in that um, defense academy. Uh, even those, uh, I, when I spoke with an, a retired AVM yesterday, and he said that most of the people who occupy that um, um, facility are cadets and not necessarily soldiers per se. Um, but, but let's talk about, we don't want to go back into, you know, why and how that place was, you know, infiltrated by bandits. But now a soldier has been killed. A high-ranking officer in that facility has been killed. First, it was insults, but now it's injury. Um, how does this make you feel as a person who, you know, used to wear the Nigerian um, army uniform and someone who has fought for the honor of this country? Okay, uh, the issue of NDA is quite devastating, painful, and I weep for Nigerian Defense Academy. Why do I say that? I was lectured in NDA. I handled from regular 46 to 51, and also taught direct regular combatant from DROC 9, to 12. So I know how the security there is. It is quite tight. I'm bearing in mind also that a lot of abduction, killing has been taking place within and around NDA. That should make our military uh, uh, people to beef up the security at that place. Take, for instance, the School of Forestry and Mechanism, Agricultural Mechanism incited adjacent to NDA, and the, uh, the Kaduna terminus of uh, Abuja uh, 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 railway terminus is at Rigasa, very close to NDA. The, uh, the airport, the international airport in Kaduna is very close to that place. And they have been organizing people, carrying away people and so on. So something should come to the mind of our officers that, look, they should have beefed up this thing. And from one division headquarters, is not up to four kilometers from there. And Air Force Base is at uh, that place, uh, uh, very close to NDA, two kilometers. Away. So they should have beefed up that place, but none. None was done. At least a platoon plus or a company should have been armed and guide that place. The cadets don't have uh, the, 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 the issue of carry arms, except when they are training on it, when they are going to range or doing uh, field training. That's when they come in contact with arms. The arms they, they use, they return it back to the armory. So the soldiers ought to be beefed up there to this event. It is so devastating that they came with bike, entered into the residential areas of officers, and took on these boys. And 
the story, I don't know whether it's true or not, that the man they abducted was found dead, but I think they are yet to clear that issue. So one of that one was wounded, but he's still in hospital and so on. So the whole thing is appalling. It's very, very appalling because it does not show any sign of seriousness on our own part. Talking, you know, ab talking about seriousness, up. Colonel, talking about seriousness here, um, look at, looking at the statement that was issued by the defense, um, by, by the, the army, um, the, the NDA community, let me, I just want to quote them directly. Um, they, they said that um, on Tuesday that the incident must be treated with all seriousness and will be thoroughly investigated. People were hoping that the, you know, the Defense Academy will come out with strong words. They would not just talk tough, but they would, we would see some form of action. But were you satisfied with the statement, the press release from um, the Defense Academy after what happened? You see, the, the, the problem is that there was a compromise in the first instance, and that led to people either this thing. You, you see from the gate, they were sleeping. Those that were at, uh, manning the, 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 uh, CCTV were asleep and so on. So this thing is, there must be a compromise or the, 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 there was a collaboration. If so not, you're insinuating that the, 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 there's a mole in the army that allowed for the NDA to be taken over by bandits. And for a senior officer to be taken or abducted, you're telling me that there is a mole, a collaboration of sorts. You believe this? Well, they must investigate them properly and come out with thorough investigation and come out with those that are, are, are seen to be to have collaborated. Be punished why accordingly. Would, why would, why, would, why would there be collaboration um, in the NDA with bandits whom... This joint tax force or joint armed forces are trying to fight and trying to repel. They're trying to stop, you know, their activities. Why would there be a collaboration? Well, you see, what we are saying is that NDA is a training institution and is not a fighting troop per se. If they had gone to Ribadu Cantonment or uh, Dalet Battalion, Dalet. Uh, 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 barracks. It's a different case. The NDA is a training institution, and there are modules which they use in making sure that the place is safe. They use soldiers, war soldiers from either demo battalion, and this is to cover up the this their 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 security to provide security for them. Cadets are seen to be training. And when they are training, they don't have arms. The arms are kept in the armory and not anywhere. So it's a different ball game. If you talk of uh, a barrack that is maintaining a workforce that is a is a fighting force that is there. So what we are saying is that the army, the hierarchy of the army, must institute a, an investigative panel to. Check out, know who is capable, know who is not, and know the people that are on duty that made this thing happen, and okay. so on. They must, they must identify them okay. by force. All right. Well, I'm going to come to you, Peter. But first, um, the 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 attack on the NDA obviously has gotten all sorts of reaction. But the first of the most uh, of the reactions is a former. Or rather, he's still a musician, but a very famous um, Daddy Shoki um, reacted in a video about what's happening in the country and what's happening in the army. And he seemed to have been, um, you know, dis disappointed in the army. Let's take a look at that video. And when we come back, I'd like to, you know, hear your take, Peter. Yeah. Our pride, the Nigerian Defense Academy, was attacked. You people are still calling these people bandit. These people are not bandits, but mercenaries. Mercenaries. We should start calling them the right thing. They are mercenaries that are coming to take over our land. See, it's a shame that right now the government cannot... You are talking of <laughs> God Almighty. It's a shame and a disgrace. A heavy disgrace. A shame 
NDA, Nigerian Defense Academy, attacked soldiers, children killed, so soldiers killed, and you people are still calling yourself Nigerian Army. But you can beat people that wear a camouflage. You can go ahead beating people on. So, uh, Peter, you can hear, you know, Daddy Shoki there. He's not just talking about the fact that the army, uh, he, he makes it seem like the army has lowered its guard and, and, and has allowed this to happen. He seems to sound like the army brought this upon themselves. Again, he's talked about the fact that the army seems to be more brutal to civilians instead of being brutal to the bandits. But share your thoughts with us. Well, um, the, that perception that the army is more is more heavy-handed on, on the civilian populace is not misplaced because we've seen incidents like this in the east of Nigeria, in the south of Nigeria, um, and we don't see a similar situation up in the north. I'll also address something that he mentioned in in his in the video that you you have um, we played for us to listen to. Um, he may, he said that these people behind it should be called the name that they are, not just bandits. They should be called the, with the most serious uh, tag. Uh, he say use word mercenaries. And that, that view is not misplaced because if you, if you look at the projections from even the um, Global Terrorism Index and any serious think tank across the world has predicted already that starting from as of 2020, going forward, the epicenter of jihadist activity in the world will shift from Middle East to, to, to Africa, especially West Africa and East Africa. So it is not out of place to believe that these people who have committed these this, this attacks uh, are mercenaries. Again, the general feeling of the populace, because I, um, information warfare is one of the things that I do, if the general feeling of the populace is that we are defeated, we are defeated people, that our military, I mean, I'm not even surprised that this is happening, to be honest, because even Conor mentioned a few minutes ago uh, of the attacks at FAN, at uh, Forest Mechanization, we've heard of these things before now. Um, the fact that this has happened, I mean, even in Bornu, there was a complaint of NDA where the cadets are not, are not armed. What of bases? These people have, have attacked bases, military bases, and held, and held their fort for, 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 for hours. I mean, the CEO was killed in Nigeria in Bornu in, in, uh, some, months, some months ago. So I'm not surprised that, uh, that the Shoki is, this is his opinion, and is, 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 I believe is the general opinion of many Nigerians right now. I, I want to push further. There's um, a former uh, military man who this morning claimed that Boko Haram members are in Mr. President's cabinet. There are governors who are sponsoring them. There are members of the... I mean, he made a very huge claim. He said governors, senators, Asso Rock officials uh, are sponsoring, you know, um, these terrorists. You know, he's making a bold claim. He said during interrogation, these names have come up. Uh, and and this is not the first time we're hearing this. Remember when President Goodluck Jonathan was the sitting president, he also mentioned at the time that he did have sponsors of Boko Haram in his cabinet. He did not name them. He never got to naming them. And, and this brings the question, are we really, really ready to fight and put an end to terrorism or at least stem it down? Or are we politicizing the issue? Um, I, I remember um, General Tuai Danjuma has said this several Other there have been other high-profile um, um, individuals in, in the country who've said this before. Even foreigners with intelligence can, can say this clearly that there are people they believe to be highly placed individuals in Nigeria who are sacred cows that cannot be touched, um, which makes which reinforces the belief that this government lacks both the political will and even uh, even the goodwill to prosecute this fight. Uh, correctly, when the clamor was for when the clamor was high that uh, the service ship should be replaced, eventually they did so, and you see, you see they, did, they did so to play to the gallery. This incident that has happened now, I believe, is is, is a very strategic one. Um, again, I mentioned information warfare and psychological warfare. What is happening now is you see these elements waging the, war, the the battle, not just only in the fields or the field in, in the actual battlefront, but in our minds. You, you, we know what's happened in Afghanistan recently. The general belief uh, that is spreading across the world is that, oh, Nigeria is going to be another an target for these people. And with one, with the, with the Cardinal State government saying there was a ban on, uh, on ransoms, that they have made this attack where they've made it and taken a major and are demanding for ransom as, as reports are, are, are carrying. It is psychological. The damage they're doing is psychological. And they are winning this war, they're asking, because they are perpetrating terror across, I mean, I'm in Lagos right now, I've been 
on the phone almost all day with people across the country. The general belief is that we're not safe or they don't know where it's next. This government is, I mean, I don't have as much information as um, the gentleman on the other, on the major TV station that spoke this morning may have at his fingertips. But it's our belief that if the government was indeed serious about this, there'll be many other things they would have done better than they've done. But I mean, I keep asking this question every day. We make it seem, and I'm not in any way trying to absolve the presidency, but we make it seem like this is a war that needs to be won just by the presidency. Where are the governors on this? The governors don't have the power constitutionally to do anything. They're, they're, practically, they're practically sitting dogs. I'll, I'll, give an, I'll, give, I'll give an example that may be a bit controversial. Um, the, South, the Southern Governors Forum um, came out some weeks ago to make certain um, recommendations to Mr. President and to the executive arm um, of government about certain things they noticed in the country, including the petroleum industry bill that was not passed into law some, some days ago. Um, we've not seen any action from the gov from, from federal government in, in response to what the governors have said. The governors are hamstrung. They can do nothing. They can, they can make these statements that are that that will seem to portray some form of power. I'm not, but sure, least, I'm I mean, not sure I no agree with you, Peter, when you say the governors are sitting docks. Governors do have, a, I mean, they're chief security officers in their state, whether it's on paper or not. Um, you know, whatever they say, whatever they do, their body language plays. I mean, look at Kaduna State, which seems to be uh, more like a theater for all of these abductions and these attacks. It seems to be uh, the hardest hits. Yes, Zamfara has its fair share, but Kaduna, it, it's more like a daily thing in Kaduna State. So really, can you say that the governors have not no role to play? They do have a role to play. Their job is to secure the people in their states first. I also use the word hamstrung. It means that even, I mean, when, when someone is hamstrung, they may have the ability to run, but they can only run so, so, so far. They can't run as fast as they normally would have without being hamstrung. These governors, even the constitution does not empower them to do the things that they'd like to do, but which they cannot do right now. Um, I mean, I, I remember an, 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 an ele during election season, some, 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 just a few months, uh, I mean, in 2019, it, it, it was on TV that I mean, the state governor was complaining that the army commander in his in his in his in his state was was in charge of those who were going to hire collection material. The fact that these kind of things can happen and the governor is not able to take action immediately without reporting to, or fact, even if he reports to DHQ, there is very little that can be done. These governors are hamstrung, and I feel sorry for Nigeria because the way it is, uh, it, 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 it will likely get worse. Colonel uh, Honda, I'm coming back to you now because again. Our uh, armed forces have been known to be the best when it comes to peacekeeping. Keeping outside this country, uh, they're very highly rated. But when it comes to winning a war in our backyards, it seems like the army is overwhelmed. Um, and, and, and there's so many things to it. I'm sure if we start having a conversation as to brain drain and welfare of the people who are fighting and what needs to be done, I mean, that, that's a whole kettle of fish on its own. But is this a wake-up call for the army and, and the guys in the rank and the file? What needs to be done as someone who's been there, who's fought in many wars, who has also trained and has been trained? What do we need to do now? Because, I mean, the president, yes, is a retired general and, and also knows how warfare happens. But this is not a conventional war. So going forward, what needs to be done? What needs to be considered? Because the army has to take the lead in dealing with this warfare. And on the part of our politicians, what needs to be done? Well, uh, you know, with the army, the Nigerian army came in contact of guerrilla warfare or asymmetric warfare in the year 1990-91, when we, we encountered uh, the, the, the uh, forces in Liberia and Sierra Leone. And the army took it upon themselves to fight that war. And we are winning. But what is happening now is that there is no proper collaboration. There is no proper synergy between the army, air force, and navy. But if there was, and the army is overwhelmed because you know they are performing duty at the United Nations level, performing duty at the AU level, performing duty at ECOMOG level, performing duty both in Tana and Estana, duty at this. And, and if we have a problem in our backyard, shouldn't the AU and the, and, the, uh, and the UN, all of these people, and ECOWAS, shouldn't they know that this, is, this should be our primary focus? We can't be fighting another person's war when our backyard is on fire. 
Well, that is the thing, you know, the, 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 the numeric uh, strength of the army is quite overwhelming. It's quite low. It's quite low, and the army cannot be everywhere at a time. So what we have suggested is that there must be more recruitment, bringing the retired people to train these soldiers. So it's not a question of uh, them thinking retired men can come and start fighting for them now. And so on. They have retired, they have retired. But they can use them for other means of returning, returning those that are there in the district. But we should have more. At least our armed forces should be up to, combined, up to 1.5 million if we are to protect our population. I'm not just talking of uh, 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 less than 500,000 and 600,000 years talking of the DC, you don't have the said. So, and they are ill-equipped. The army is ill-equipped, as, well, as I say now. And they don't have all the instruments of warfare to fight. You know, so that is the DC. And there is always that problem of because high-placed uh, 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 civilians, high-placed leaders, high-placed politicians have been fingered as those sponsoring these people. By United Nations, and it's alleged by United Nations that they are the ones sponsoring them. You have then been able to pick up one name and publish and prosecute. No, but in United Arab Republic, they have done that and they have jailed about seven of them. But we keep hearing rumors that these people are being sponsored by top uh, politicians, top uh, uh, leaders, and so on in the country. And the Attorney General, Will White, said, there are over 500 lists and so on, but they have not published it. They known, Nigeria has known the people, and we are just playing to the gallery. Okay. That is the problem we have. Okay. Peter, we're, we're wrapping up right now. So, uh, quickly, do you see this going away anytime soon with the body language of Mr. President, our politicians, and the fact that 2023 seems to be more uh, in view for our politicians uh, than security? I, I typically am an optimist, but to say that this is going to go away anytime soon would be would be would be both naive and would be both injurious to the confidence of people who who trust our council to to take decisions. One of the reasons I'm saying this is because with the build up of arms across across um, the Sahel down to the, down to where we are at West Africa, it, it, it is it is it is alarming. You have non state actors across different parts of the country who have built up. Um, Light and, and and heavy weapons. You, um, and even even with what's happening now, there's going to be migration of of of, uh, of jihadist fighters from the Middle East to this part to this part of the world, and they find Nigeria to be a, a, a lucrative target for what they've been doing. The, the borders are porous. The government is insisting in its fight against terrorism. So it is likely that this kind of attacks will increase across many cities in Nigeria in the next 18 months as we head towards the elections. One of the reasons this will happen is that. They are determined to pull Nigeria. I mean, it happened during the last uh, elections, no, the 2015 elections. Boko Haram had captured significant uh, uh, land masses in Nigeria, and the election had to be postponed or delayed for a while so that the military could be deployed to deal with those, to deal with those issues at the time. They are going to repeat the same thing in this in this uh, election cycle, and it's, it's, a scary, it's a scary consideration. I, I don't know how else to say this, but we are in deep trouble. Well, we hope that that would not be the case. Uh, Peter Ibedian is a security expert, and Chinedua Honda is a retired colonel in the Nigerian Army. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Yeah, thank, thank you, very much. Well. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking about the crisis within the PDP as it takes a new turn, and a court has ordered that the party chairman, Uche Sakandus, steps down. Stay with us. <laughs>